episode of Command Combat Battle Reports. Today we have Battles of Westeros, which is the board game version of Game of Thrones, which is the popular TV show and uh, book series. Today we have David playing House Lannister and Marty playing House Stark. Hello, I'm David, and we're going to be playing a Battle Lore game of Game of Thrones. Uh, the specific thing is the Battle of Westeros, just so a look over there. Uh, I'm playing Lannister, I believe. I've actually never really watched the show and I haven't read the books, so I'm just here to play a game that has a flavor that I'm not that sure about, but should be fun. And I'm hoping to use my superior cavalry to run him off the board. David's commanders today are Adam Marbrand, which has the special ability that he can move through any kind of terrain, even impassable. And Kevin Lannister, who you may remember on the TV series, he's been really interesting on there, and of course both of them are on the book series. He may essentially lead instead of attacking, which means he essentially gives extra dice to uh, some of his friendly units who are attacking uh, enemy units, which doesn't make them friendly, but I guess friendly to him. Uh, my name is Marty, and first time playing this game, I just purchased it a couple weeks ago. Um, I'm going to try to keep him from running off, running off the board. That's my Marty's leaders are Mage Mormont, again, per forgive me if I'm mispronouncing it. Uh, she has heavy armor and is stalwart, which basically means that she is really hard to move. She and the, the units that she's with will just basically stand and fight, and it'll be very hard to dislodge them. His other leader is essentially the attacker. He is on horseback. His name is Ricard Karstark, and he has a toughness of one, which basically, again, means that he is hard to dislodge and will be able to uh, take a lot of blows. So he's going to be a good defensive unit. This is good because Marty's side is House Stark, which is on the right, and the scenario calls for him to defend the positions there near the bottom. You may see a couple of white dots. Those are the spots that House Stark must defend, and House Lannister, which is the red, must take those spots. Uh, House Stark is gray, House Lannister is red. Let's see what happens. House Stark begins by moving Mage's uh, infantry up on his right flank. Uh, you'll notice that there's a lot of maneuvering before attacking, because in this game you do the maneuvering rather than... Uh, maneuver and attack, you do a lot of maneuvering and then there's one big attack from each side. So now Lannister is moving their cavalry up on the left and their infantry up on their right. Looks like, uh, yes, House uh, Stark is going to move their infantry behind the river, they're going to try to defend back there, and Lannister is going to try to move up their cavalry to stop them before they get behind that river. Oh, but now Mage is striking out and she is going to try to take out the initial cavalry before the rest of the cavalry makes itself. Uh, scene. Although she has not chosen to attack yet, they're still maneuvering. The, uh, Stark has put uh, archers up on the hill. Oh, and now Lannister is bringing up its cavalry and surrounding Mage. He probably should have gone ahead and done his attack, or she might should have probably done her attack. But now Lannister's getting to strike first, and he's doing a little bit of damage to Mage. But now Mage strikes back and takes out some of the cavalry. That is what her stalwart does for her. But now she is having to retreat back. That was the damage that uh, Lannister's cavalry did. He is now following up. Oh no, he got pushed back as well. Remember, she has the stalwart ability which allows her to fight back. And she's starting to lose some infantry there. And being retreating back to the ford, trying to get across that river there. Now the, uh, the Stark cavalry is coming up and trying to hit the Lannisters on the flank. And he does some damage, he takes out, no, no, he's causing the cavalry to retreat there. All right, so we're left with, at the end of this first turn, uh, the Starks are moving behind the river there, they're trying to get across that ford, but they're striking up uh, on their right flank there, they're going ahead and trying to uh, strike the, Star uh, the Lannisters. The Lannisters, meanwhile, have brought almost all of their cavalry down to try to stop them before they get across that river. Now here comes the rest of the Lannister cavalry, they're going to try to bring it all up to bear. The, uh, that's a surprising move. The, Star, uh, the Starks are moving out from behind that river. They're not going to try to just defend across the river there. They're actually going to strike across and try to go on the offensive. The Lannister cavalry continues to move its way up. Starks move up to the river. They're going to try to make their... Uh, oh, they're trapping some cavalry out there, and they're going to make their attack now. They take out a bunch of that cavalry. And they finish it off. So now, oh, and they are damaging more of the cavalry. All that's left is their commander, Adam. 
So he's going to bring his cavalry and infantry to protect them, and they're going to strike back. And then the Lannister cavalry is going to move out of the way and make room for the infantry. They're going to try their bid at this. And they clear out that unit, which is now going to clear their way to get across that uh, the ford there. Adam personally strikes at the Stark cavalry, pushing them back, and he follows them up. And he hits, taking half of them single-handedly. Neither side has moved this turn, but I think the Starks are going to bring in their cousin Tony wearing his iron suit to break the stalemate. Now the uh, Lannister cavalry follows up and is continuing to push back the, uh, the Starks. Starks are fighting back. Mage has that special ability. They are taking out a lot of that cavalry. And they take out some of the infantry and cause... Oh, no, wait, no, this is not cavalry retreating. This is cavalry rushing forward. They are going across that ford and taking the, uh, taking the objective. Now they're taking on the, uh, uh, the archers, and they, take, they, they completely wipe out that unit. The cavalry goes rushing through them and takes on the other archer unit, knocking out one of them. And back at the river, they're taking out more of the Stark cavalry there. And the Stark archers are fighting back and killing off a little bit of the, that cavalry there. And Oh, they completely wipe them out. Now that is a surprise move right there. That was some heavy cavalry. And the Starks at the river have taken out more, uh, more Lannister cavalry. So it has been a major turnaround. It looked like the Lannisters were making a major breakthrough through the river there, but they man the Starks managed to hold off. This is exactly what we kind of expected, folks. This was the Stark uh, special advantage is that they are really stalwart, and once they have their back against the wall, just like a trapped wolf, will pounce back and do a lot of damage. The Lannisters aren't finished though, they have a foothold beyond the river, they have gotten past that ford, and you can see them just beyond there right now, the holding off while the rest of the infantry is trying to move up. The Starks start their turn by rushing to protect the other objective, and they move up uh, past the river as well. The Lannisters go to try to take the other objective. The Starks are rushing back to try to protect them. It's kind of, that's the one problem now is because the Lannisters are across the river, they have to do damage control. And then the Lannisters are jumping on the other objective and moving up their infantry here. Lannister cavalry went into the woods, but they'll continue on through to the other flank. Adam is using his special ability to get across the river and get in behind the Stark line. The Lannisters are pouring across that river, no pun intended. This is all going to come down to those objectives, despite what else has happened in this game. The Lannister infantry attacks and they take out the cavalry unit. They attack the archers. And they push them off that hill. They continue after the archers, killing off a few of them. The archers fight back. Oh no, it's still the Lannisters and they wipe out almost the entire rest of the unit. But the archers fight back, and the one remaining archer takes out the cavalry unit. So, you are left with the Starks' back is really up against the wall. They still have one objective and are barely holding them off. But they are managing to hold them off at the last minute there. The Lannisters are pouring over both fords, and the Starks are trying to hold desperately on to whatever they can. The Stark archers retake the hill. The Lannisters go into the woods to try to... Oh, and they continue to protect their objective they've currently taken, but they have to take both of them, I believe. The Starks come running back and hit the Lannisters in, uh, at the fords. They manage to take out one of them. And they take out more. Will it be enough? They take out some more over at the ford. They are attacking them all along the front here. Yes, they take out that unit and... Oh, they take out the entire unit. They now have that objective back. The Lannisters are now consolid... Or the Starks are now consolidating. I think the Lannisters might have one of the objectives there. No, the, Lannis the, the Starks have protected both of them, but now they're attacking. The Lannisters are attacking that particular uh, objective, and they are pushing Rickard off of the objective. They are taking the objective. They have one of them, yes. I've, it's been confirmed for me now, they have to take both objectives, so now the Lannisters have taken one. If they can take this other one, they might win the game. We are on turn five. 
yes, they managed to push the Starks off. The Lannisters now have both objectives. However, the Starks can come back. They try to take it. They roll to take back the objective. Adam is personally holding on to the objective. That will not be enough wounds to kill him. However, his back is up against the wall. He has nowhere to retreat, and that retreat marker would cause him to take damage. However, he has several wounds, so once again, it's not enough wounds to kill him, and therefore he is not being considered having to retreat, and that makes it a Lannister victory. The fact that Adam's back was against the wall literally won the game for him. If he had anywhere to retreat, he would have retreated. The Starks would have retaken that objective, but since he has nowhere to retreat, he stays where he is. It is a Lannister victory. Well, we managed to victory, I guess, through sheer luck and lack of anything else. It was a fun game. It's the learning the rules and the mechanics are kind of challenging, but it was a fun game, and I'm shocked that I won. <laughs> Well, that was a bit of a fluke in the rules, but that's how we're going to end it. Thank you all for watching. Be sure to subscribe and watch us on Facebook and Twitter and all those fun things. Plus, we're going to have an entire channel dedicated to these types of games and other fun things coming up this fall or winter. Keep your eyes open for that. Happy gaming, everybody! Did you like this video? Then be sure to subscribe to see more and share us with your friends. Also, if you'd like to support us financially or just give us a tip, consider a donation on Patreon. A little donation from each of our viewers helps us expand the videos, keeps the channel going, and helps us make more of them. You also get bonus videos and a big thank you from us. Happy gaming, everybody!